Hello fellow game developers, this is James with part 5 of the 2D game platforming development. This is in Unity of course. If you have not watched the first four parts, I recommend that, otherwise you will be lost. As promised in a previous video, we're going to be covering backdrops and environmental props today. Not a whole lot that has to do with gameplay, it's more of an aesthetic look and feel sort of thing. So we're in our scene. To cover what we've got so far, we've got a sprite animated for moving. He flips to see both directions. He's built from a first-person controller, which we've modified to be 2D. And, um, and we animated him. So let's go ahead and set this up. Let's see, where are we? I'm going to go ahead and change my FPS back up to 10 and scale my guy back down since he is still quite huge from the last video and uh, get him there okay now the backdrop as you can see in 2d space with all of our objects we have an area here that we want to put our stuff in well if we want a background it should probably be at the back now, 2d games I don't know how they were built in the olden days. I think they were just coded and had little art graphics. The new way to do this in most people's 2D games is through the sandwich technique. That's at least what I call it. You've got a series of layers which are all controlled by the Z of an object. So let's say I want to put in a game object, create other cube. I'm going to scale this cube up. Now if I put it on the Z at say zero, it's going to sit right here. Now if I move this down and play my game, you'll notice that it is blocking my player's movement. If I move it forward and go back to my game, my player moves behind it. Okay? Now if I want my player to move, and let's say this is my backdrop, and I want him to be in front of it, I need to move it back on the Z. Okay? So now if I play the game, he walks in front of the backdrop. So it's like a sandwich. You got your two pieces of bread. The front being, or the top being the camera, and the back being the backdrop. Maybe you like bacon on your sandwich. So let's just uh, get started here and actually make the backdrop. I'm going to name this cube Backdrop so I don't get it confused with the floor. We should probably name that too. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, floor. Okay, so we've got our backdrop and we need it to fill the whole screen. So we're going to go ahead and use the scale tool or press R on your keyboard and scale this up. until it fills the screen. And I'm going to move it all the way to the back of the other cube so it doesn't get in the way of any of our other sandwich layers. Now to apply a texture to this, because we can't see our floor, to apply a texture to this we're going to create a new material. So go to the materials folder, right click, create a new material. We can name the material the same as the uh, object, backdrop. If I could type, <clears throat> we're going to select a texture, and we haven't imported any yet, so let's talk about background textures. Now these can be intricate, very elaborate textures, or they can be extremely simple textures. Well, my first scene is going to be in a warehouse style environment. So I've created a texture here, which is 16 by 16. Now I know this looks like a pretty dumb background to have with just a couple of single lines, but what we're going to do is tile this so it gives that kind of um, sheet metal appearance that's kind of uh, ribbed, I guess is the term. I'm not an architect, I don't do construction, I have no idea what they call this metal, um, but we'll just see what it looks like. So we're going to drag this into our textures folder, and while we're at it, I also have this crate this is going to be the prop we're going to put in today. This one is also um, very small, 
to save on space for our game. It's only 32 pixels by 32 pixels. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and drag that one in as two. So now we can go back to Unity, select our textures, grab our warehouse, and change the settings so that it's nice and crisp. Clamp. Actually, we need this to be able to repeat because we're going to tile it. We're going to change this to 32 and 16 bit and apply. We can do the same to the crate while we're in here. The crate is not going to repeat. We're not going to tile it, so we want it to clamp. Okay, so then we're going to go to point 32 and 16 bits and apply. Okay, so in our materials, we have a backdrop. Materials folder, backdrop material. Let's go ahead and select that metal graded look there. And if we go ahead and grab our backdrop and drag our backdrop material onto it, you can see it's it's applying, but it's really huge. So we need to go ahead and change the tiling on this. So down here in tiling on the X, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and change this to uh, 30. And you can see what that does. It creates that that metal louvered effect. Okay. Now you can do it vertically, but you're not going to see any difference. It's it, it's just stretching it. So. <clears throat> Now, if you have one giant background image, let's say you drew a cityscape, or maybe it's a big forest, then you can go ahead and set your image up the way you like. You don't have to do tiling. Um, but for this, I'm using a tileable texture, or seamless texture as they call them, so I can go ahead and use that, the tiling feature, to seam that. Now, it, it looks a bit bright right now, and let's say you wanted to darken it up. With the standard diffuse shader, we can actually change the color because it's gray. So if I wanted this to be a red backdrop, or a blue one, or maybe I want it just to be a little bit darker, we can go ahead and adjust those values with the color property. And I'm going to make mine just a wee bit darker right there. Okay? So now this is the backdrop, and if we play our game, the player walks around in front of the backdrop and he jumps and he moves. And that's fine. So now let's talk about props, the environment. We're going to create um, a crate, because every video game has these unexplained, God knows where they came from, crates. So what we're going to do to start is we are not going to create a cube. In fact, we didn't have to make one for this. It was just easier at the time because I had one. We're going to use a plane. What we're going to do with the plane is we're going to rotate it on the X 90 degrees and the Y 180. Okay. Now we don't want our player to be able to interact with this, so to be sure he doesn't run into it or anything, we're going to turn off the mesh collider and move it back on the Z. So then what we're going to do is create a new material in the materials folder, because we need to make a material for the plane. Material, crate, wood. I put the wood in there because you might have metal crates later on in like a space station or whatever. So it's just good to be a little bit descriptive in your names. We can leave it at defuse. That's fine because we're not doing any transparencies. We're going to select a texture and pick the crate. So now if we go to our, uh, our plane here and we can rename this to crate wood and drag our crate wood material onto it. That is a huge crate. Um, if you're building maybe, uh, I think it was world number five in Mario, everything was monstrously big. There you go. If your game is to play as a little dude named Tiny Tim, and everything in the world is humongous, you, you don't really need to follow the next step. And that is to scale down the crate. We're going to go ahead and pick our scale tool and just make that a bit smaller, a little bit significantly smaller. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag it down and set it on our floor. Now in the sandwich, this is the cheese, like I was talking about before. This is stuff, it just adds to the game's visual appearance. Now like before, we have the defuse, and we can go ahead and change the color on this. We can make it darker so that it falls in with the dark areas in the back. Okay, so if, if an object is interactable, I guess, or interactive, like the floor, or maybe a platform, or it's a gun, 
or it's an enemy you can set those to a brighter shade of gray so that the player knows something needs to be done with them or you can turn them darker or however your game wants to look I'm gonna go ahead and set mine right there that looks good so now my player can walk around and he's got this crate and they might try and jump on it but nothing happens so we've got some environment props um, let's say you want to build something other than a crate let me go ahead and find an asset here hang on just a second okay so I've got this crane object that I drew in, in, uh, in Microsoft Paint and edited so that it's transparent I did that in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you want to use and so I've got this crane in my warehouse so I'm gonna go ahead and drag that over into textures as well we're gonna take into account down here the size it's 44 pixels by 82 pixels okay so in our textures folder we grab our crane and we're gonna change that the settings to clamp to point now we can't set it down to 32 because it's 44 pixels wide so we're just gonna pick the next number up 64 okay and then we're gonna change it again to 16-bit and apply so we're gonna take our crate wood here we're gonna duplicate it with control D we're gonna rename this one crane go to the materials right click create material uh, crane and then select the texture of our crane object okay now we're gonna go to our crane and change this material by dragging our crate onto it it will replace the other one okay now we, this one is currently hiding behind the other in the game window so we need to move it out and up and you can see it's all funky it's compressed it's shrunk and that's because of the size of our plane so we're gonna press the scale tool and just scale it up until it looks about right that's a pretty big crane you also notice that the black area is showing and that's because this image actually has a, a transparent background so we need to change the diffuse shader on the material to a transparent diffuse and now we have our crane we can go ahead and put that at the top of the window and scale it up okay now our image we said was 44 by 82 and we're getting this really weird pixel look because in the textures we set it to 64. So because the highest number here is 82, we should actually have that set to 128. And if we hit apply, it didn't really get any sharper. Let's go ahead and play our game and see how it looks. Well, it's a bit kind of funky looking way up there. Um, let's see if we can get that to be a little cleaner, maybe. Let's try a bit higher. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that's blurry. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're just going to have to go with 64. So I guess the lesson in this <laughs> is that um, our background was, was 16 by 16. And our cube was 32 by 32. So if you're going to make a material, just make it extra wide and, and, and make sure it's square. Okay, so if it's 32 pixels wide, make it 32 pixels tall. If it's 82 pixels wide, make it 82 pixels tall. Just, just make your sprites square, and that should do it. So those are the environment props. In the next video, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about platforms. Uh, stationary platforms, um, how to interact with the player. We're going to talk about limits, um, edges, and ceilings. Okay, a lot to talk about in the next video. So we've got our backdrop from this video, which we've put in, tiled the texture. And we also added in some environment props. Turn off the mesh collider so they don't attack the player, or interact with the player, I'm sorry. And we've also created a crate. All right, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.